If you want a Toyota pickup in America, you can get yourself the full-size Tundra or mid-size Tacoma. If you're in other parts of the world and want a Toyota pickup or ute, you have the Hilux and Land Cruiser 70 series available. If you happen to be in Japan, you'll also get the van trucks, including the adorable Pixies. But what if Toyota is working on something even smaller than the Hilux and Tacoma, while at the same time resurrecting an all but forgotten nameplate? And what if Mazda was getting back in the pickup game as well? <laughs> If you're excited about Toyota having another small pickup truck here in North America or in other parts of the world as well, because this could be a global product, but if you're excited about it, smash the like button. Today, I'm gonna break down the Toyota Stout nameplate, what it means, what it has been in the past, and how Toyota could produce this vehicle here in North America. Let's get into it. Starting at the drive, an Australian website, Toyota Stout, old badge, could be revived. And they have a cute little render of this, kind of a modification of the light cruiser pickup truck that was teased by Akio Toyota as an EV last December. And according to Argentinian website AutoWeb, Toyota has registered Stout in the region. So let's head on over to AutoWeb in Argentina. And it has, of course, been registered in Argentina by the National Institute of Industrial Property. What's interesting is the stout was never used in Argentina, nor was this nameplate. So let's go down memory lane. What was the Toyota stout? Well, there were several generations, three generations to be exact. It came out in the 50s, around the same time as the Toyota Crown. It actually started as a Toyota pet vehicle like the original Crown did as well. We actually got this vehicle in North America back in the day. Between 64 and 69, we had the Stout Light or the Light Stout, which is funny because uh, Toyota had Light Cruiser on that one vehicle uh, that they showed in December. But it was replaced here in North America by the Hilux in 1969, and it continued to be uh, offered in other parts of the world. They had a third generation, uh, but at this point in time, Toyota was moving to their own pickup trucks made for America, like the Tundra and Tacoma. Since Argentina's breaking this news, what vehicles do they get in Argentina? And if they do get a Stout, would we see a Stout as well? It's hard to say because they don't import any trucks from North America. So if they were to have a Stout and we were to have a Stout in North America, they both can't come from Japan. And that's because the chicken tax no trucks are imported into America because of the 25% tariff on light trucks. Pretty much every single other thing has disappeared with the chicken tax since 1964, other than the truck protection. So the big three essentially want this to stick around so that they have a better control and a better foothold in their own North American market and therefore their own pocketbooks as well. But even if we don't get a Japanese-made stout, it doesn't mean that it can't be an international model. I mean, look at the Corolla Cross. The Corolla Cross is built in like Thailand. It's also built in Alabama. And that'll be a big thing, a big talking point today. And the Corolla Cross, in theory, would be the one to share the platform with this new small pickup truck. We'll just call it the stout for today's purposes. The Tacoma is no longer that entry small level pickup truck because we have the Maverick and the Santa Fe. Santa Cruz on the market now. And they're saying that the new Tacoma is nearly three feet longer than the Tacoma in the 90s. And the legend of Cooper Erickson, who works a lot with Toyota EVs, he also put the V8 back in the IS. He said they're currently looking into trucks smaller than the Tacoma for Toyota's lineup. And they say where a new unibody pickup, perhaps based on the new Corolla Cross subcompact co crossover, might compete directly with Maverick or Santa Cruz. Cooper goes on to say it's undeniable that those products have a place in the market. And how big is that segment going to get? I don't know, but it's something that we need to be looking at and figuring out if it's an area we should play in. It's absolutely an area you should be playing in, Cooper. Look at the, uh, let me pull it up. So Toyota, there absolutely would be a market for your small pickup truck. Look at the demand for the Tacoma, the number one midsize pickup truck in America. And don't let Ford with their Maverick and Hyundai with their Santa Cruz get that market all to themselves. You can do pickups just as good as them, if not better. So let's get into where they would be making this pickup truck if they were to here in North America. Option number one, Toyota Motor Manufacturing, Mississippi. This is where they create the Corolla. And the Corolla sales have been down about 21% this year. So we look at the sales in 2021. They only sold about 128,000. The demand for the Corolla is going down over time. 
you could see in 2015, they produced 190,000, which is over their normal capacity. Their max capacity, according to this article, is 170,000 units per year. So if in 2022, it finishes with around 101,000, that's what they're pacing right now. That means they have almost 70,000 units per year of production where they could produce a C, C platform uh, pickup truck based off the Corolla, the Corolla Cross's small compact platform. Option number two, where it makes the most sense because now they can split it with Mazda in Alabama. They have a new plant opened up late last year. It's where they produce the Corolla Cross. It's where they produce the Mazda CX-50. And we know Mazda will be employing a hybrid powertrain from Toyota. So why can't Toyota and Mazda work together on a pickup truck? Revitalize or re resurrect, I should say, the Mazda B2000. And you also come back with the Stout. So bring back two legendary nameplates. You have a Mazda version of this pickup truck. You have a Toyota version of this pickup truck. And you kick ass to Hyundai and you kick ass to the Maverick from Ford. This plant can produce 300,000 vehicles per year. Now, production is early. It will continue to ramp up, not only for the Corolla Cross and the CX-50, but what kind of sales are they doing right now? We go to the Toyota newsroom. We go to the Corolla Cross. They've only sold 37,000 units after three quarters here in 2022. They are pacing 50,000 units. That means there's 100,000 units left, either for the Corolla Cross or something else to take that up for following years. If you look at the CX-50 from Mazda, what kind of sales do they have there? 10,000 for the entire th uh, first three quarters. So they're pacing about 14 or 15,000 units for 2020. That means they have essentially 120,000, 130,000 uh, units for capacity. Mazda could definitely benefit from having a truck in their lineup as well. If we look at the sales of the Maverick, after the third quarter, they've sold 51,000 units. They are pacing just under 70,000 units. And if we go to Hyundai, they've sold twenty about 27,000 units in the first three quarters of 2022. They're pacing 36,000 units. So Toyota and Mazda could easily saturate the market with minimum of 100,000 units from the two of them to get an excellent product out for the customers. So what kind of vehicle would we expect from a Toyota and Mazda collaboration? Let's let's get into it. Up top, we have the current only entries in the compact pickup truck market based off unibody vehicles. You could probably put the Honda Ridgeline in here, even though it's uh, a little bit bigger, in theory, a little bit more capable as well. It has a V6 where these things have four cylinders, turbo four cylinders, etc. So here we go. What are they going to use? They could go a couple routes. If it's just Toyota not using Mazda powertrains at all, maybe a little worrisome. We don't have any evidence that Toyota's more powerful powertrain seen in the K platform. Take the RAV4 example, the two and a half liter naturally aspirated or the two and a half liter hybrid. We don't have any evidence of those being slotted into a C platform vehicle. A pickup truck would definitely make the case for them putting those more potent powertrains or making room for those more potent powertrains in a smaller C platform vehicle. They could Toyota even use the K platform if they wanted to, absolutely, but not at that Mazda plant. I don't see it working. So if we just look at what the Corolla Cross has, that's what these powertrains are. We have a direct shift EV CVT transmission with a real first gear with a two liter naturally aspirated engine. This could come in around 25K. It would be underpowered compared to the, the rest of the competition out there. Toyota would still sell a crap ton of them. The best option from that vehicle, the Corolla Cross, is the hybrid, which is brand new. We actually haven't seen on the market. I was supposed to drive it when I drew, drove the new uh, Toyota Crown in Nashville last month but or earlier this month. But uh, it wasn't ready, I don't think. So that vehicle, I estimated on the, the torque, by the way, but that vehicle has 194 horsepower and we could see 37 miles per gallon from that which would match the toyota which would match the ford mavericks hybrid while offering similar uh capacities as well now it wouldn't be quite as cheap i don't think as that ford maverick uh either but the ford maverick the achilles heel it's only front wheel drive and this stout or whatever hybrid 
would have all-wheel drive standard. What if Toyota were to use a Mazda powertrain or several Mazda powertrains? Well, that opens up the gate for the six-speed auto. And we know that six-speed auto can fit into small vehicles. Look at the CX-30, look at the Mazda 3. Compact vehicles that employ that six-speed automatic, great transmission. They could also use the two and a half liter Skyactiv-G turbo with 250 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. And that would directly compete with the Santa Cruz uh, two and a half liter not quite as powerful, but definitely in the same uh, punching, like the same ring, if you know what I mean, as well as Maverick 2.0 Turbo. But the 2.0 Turbo Maverick would definitely be behind that Mazda 2.5 liter and the Santa Cruz 2.5 liter. As much as I would love to see a, a 2.4, 2.5 liter turbo, I just don't see it happening because the new Tacoma is supposed to get that 2.4 turbo. So I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense for this smaller pickup truck to get that sort of power as the Tacoma, if that makes sense. And maybe that Tacoma also gets a two and a half liter hybrid. I'm not hearing that, but we're hearing a 2.4 liter hybrid uh, with the turbo on it. So that's probably coming as well. But if Toyota comes out with a Corolla Cross pickup truck, maybe called the Stout, maybe made with Mazda, would you guys be interested? Would you want a hybrid with all-wheel drive and almost 200 horsepower and over 35 miles per gallon with Toyota reliability made in America? That would be pretty cool as well. And it would definitely bring some competition to the small pickup truck market that I believe there's a huge demand for. Even though the midsize pickup truck is massive, a lot of people want those small pickup trucks that we had in the 90s. You just can't get them anymore. Like the Ranger, well, the Ranger is much bigger now, but the, the, the Ranger from the 90s, the B2000, like we said, for a Mazda, which is like the same pickup truck. And then you had the small Tacoma as well as the, the small Nissan back then as well. So anyways, I'm going to end it there. A lot of conjecture on my point, if not everything today is bit conjecture. We know that trademark in uh, Argentina is official for the Stout, but that it just brings up a lot of questions because it would be imp imported from Japan and we don't get any trucks imported from Japan unless they're essentially SUVs, which are body on frame. Thank you, Chicken Tax. And thank you, Big Three, for keeping that around. But I'll see you guys discuss down below bringing some great ideas to the conversation. And if you made it this far into the video, haven't hit the like button, I would appreciate that. And the more likes we get, the more likely Toyota, uh, probably not, but at least it lets Toyota know if they're watching, which they, they do watch, just not all the time. It lets them know that people are interested in a small, compact pickup truck to fight the Maverick, to fight the Santa Cruz. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you subscribe because if I hear a hint, a whisper, a small peep from the industry about a small Toyota pickup truck, I will deliver it to you guys in a video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves. And as always, peace.